I've been using FL Studio for a very, very long time. I've coached tons of producers in the software and my entire career was built off of FL. But anyway, now that I've kind of established my credibility, I don't want to waste your time. This is FL Studio. Now, before we do anything, what we're going to do is go up to File, go down to New from Template and select Empty. You can choose if you want to save your current project. I'm just going to select No. And now, as you can see, we've opened a completely empty project, a completely blank slate. Now, I'm going to cover these main windows here. On the left, this is the browser. This is where we can easily access files that we've added ourselves, as well as a couple folders that ImageLine has added. So we can see all the files in our current project. We can see our recent files, our plugin database, and so on. There's also a few tabs up here that I'm not going to go over because they're pretty self-explanatory and you won't really be using them anyway. So as you can see, I have the Akeo Essential Sample Pack link in the description in this browser here. How did I add it into the browser? Well, all you have to do is literally just take the folder that you want to add into the browser and drag it directly into the browser and it will show up. You can also do it manually by going to options, file settings, and then clicking on the folder icons to add it manually. And then if you want to delete something, you can just select it and press delete. Now that we've gone over the browser, we have the toolbar up here. I'm not going to go over everything right now because that's completely unnecessary and we're going to have some hands-on learning. If we press F6, this is the channel rack. You can think of this as a list of all the plugins and samples that you've used in your project, as well as a step sequencer. So you can sequence your own drum patterns in here. As you can see, there's an empty sampler. If we click on it, it's completely empty. We'll go over this in just a bit, but for now we can close out of it. And we have a few other options that I will tell you in just a bit. This main window right here is the playlist. This is where we're going to build out all of our patterns, all of our melodies, our drums, and all of that, and create a full song out of it. You can think of this as like the heart of FL Studio. If you press F7, this will open the piano roll. It's empty right now, but this is where we would program chords and melodies. And then if you press F9, this is the mixer where we can individually route a sound to one of its own mixer channels and then apply effects to it on the left here. I'm going to press F5 again. And just a quick summary for all the shortcuts because these are the most important shortcuts that you need to learn. F5 to open the playlist, F7 to open the piano roll, F6 to open the channel rack, and F9 to open the mixer. You can also use these buttons up here if you want to. Anyway, now that we've gone over the fundamentals, let's just get into the music production. So we've already added the Akeo Essentials sample pack into the browser, link in the description. And let's open the drums folder. Let's open the kicks folder. Folder. And as you can see, we have a huge list of all the files here. If we click it, it's going to play a preview of the sample so that you can choose which one that you like. So for example, I could choose kick 18. Let's say we want to start writing ideas and building out our song. We can left click this kick right here and directly drag it into the playlist or the channel rack. Now, if we drag it into the playlist, it's going to still show up in the channel rack because remember the channel rack is a step sequencer, but also kind of like a list of all the sounds that you've used in your project. Let's try adding it into the playlist. And if we press F6 to open the channel rack again, as you can see, this kick has shown up in the channel rack because we added it to the playlist. But just for an example, we could take a kick and then directly drag it into the channel rack, but it wouldn't show up in the playlist. Anyway, I'm just going to right click and delete this. If your samples aren't showing, you can select all and let's build out a kick pattern. So as you can see, I'm selected on the pencil tool. This is the most basic tool that you'll be using for the most part. And in the snap to grid option, I'm selected on beat. What this means is that the kick will snap to the lines on the grid. So each line is just one beat. So we can just left click and program in a simple kick pattern. And if we press play, so as you can see, it's not playing. If we press F6 to go to the channel rack and press play, as you can see, it's playing through the channel rack and not the playlist. That is because we're selected on pattern mode up here. If we left click, it's going to turn green. And this means it's playing through the song and not the individual pattern. Let's press play again. So now it's playing through the playlist because we're selected on song mode. Anyway, I'm just going to select the paint tool. And what we can do with this tool is just left click and drag like this. And up here, we can select the tempo of our song, which is just how fast or slow the song is. So we could put this down to 128. And this essentially means that your song is at 128 beats per minute. Let's press play again. So now we're kind of getting somewhere. I say we go ahead and choose a clap. So let's open the claps folder. Let's look through some of the claps and choose one that we like. I'm going to choose 21. So let's left click and drag it directly into the playlist. And we can do something like this. So you might hear that the clap is very loud compared to the kick. So how can we fix that? Let's go to the channel rack F6 and we can turn the clap down with this volume knob right here. So right about there is good. You're going to get an ear for this over time. 
I want to copy this clap over to the rest of the to the rest of the pattern. So what we can do is hold control, left click, drag, and this is going to select all of these claps here. Now we can press control C, then control V and drag it over like this. Control D to deselect it. So it sounds good, but it's a little bit boring. Let's try and add some more instruments, maybe some hi-hats or something like that. Let's open F6, and I'm going to close out of these folders and open the symbols folder. So as you can see, we have the channel rack opened up, and I'm going to open the hi-hats and just look through these samples again. I'll choose open hat one, and we can just left click. And this time we're going to drag it into the channel rack instead of the playlist. You'll see this green line under the above sample. That just indicates you're adding another sample rather than actually replacing this one. And we're adding it into the channel rack this time so that we can sequence our own pattern like this. If we press play, once again, it's playing through the playlist and we want it to play through this individual pattern or the channel rack. So we can go up to this button right here, click on it. It's going to turn orange. Now it's on pattern mode. Press play. And now it's playing through the channel rack. So as you can see, we've programmed in this pattern now. So a few things are the quick. This green dot is the on or off button. If you click it and play the pattern, it's not going to play anything. If you control click it, it's going to solo just this instrument. So if you had a huge list of all the instruments in your channel rack and you solo just this instrument, it would only play this one. You can control click it again to undo it. This right here is the panning knob. It chooses whether the sound is playing on the left or the right speaker. Of course, this is the volume knob. I showed you this earlier. We'll go over what this is in just a bit. And let's make sure we're selected on the hi-hat. Just click on this bar right here and it's going to light up green. Now from here, we can actually select this graph editor and this is going to open open a few options. Right now we're actually selected on velocity and this essentially just means the volume of the sample. So we can control the individual volumes of these notes here. Something like that. Gives it a little bit more of a human feel. Usually velocity would mean how hard or soft the note is being played, but since this is just a single sample and not a plugin, for example, it's just the volume. We can also select the pan window and do something like this, and this is just going to decide if the note is playing on the left or the right. So this is going to kind of separate the hi-hat from all of the other elements that we're going to add later. And then we can click on the graph editor to close it. Now that we've programmed in this pattern, we want it to play in the playlist. We're already selected on pattern one and we can just left click to place it into the playlist. Now a cool trick is to hold control, left click, drag, and then press control B to duplicate it like this. Remember to select song mode and press play. So the hi-hat is pretty loud, but I think we should go ahead and just mix all of these drums together so that everything sounds balanced. Let's go to F6, and as you can see, the kick and the clap is not being shown in the channel rack. To fix that, let's just select all in this category selector. And by the way, we can go ahead and right click and just delete this sampler because it's empty. Now, I said I was going to show you what these are. With these, you can target which mixer track that the sound is on. So for example, we could left click and drag this up to one, this one up to two, and then this one up to three. Now, if we go to the mixer, which is F9 and press play, as you can see, all of these sounds are showing up on our designated mixer channel. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to right click on this green dot right here, which is the kick channel. I'm gonna turn the kick all the way down and then just keep pressing space bar to play the kick and as you can see the volume here is rising up and i'm going to make sure it's hitting at about negative six decibels right about there now i did this because the kick is going to be kind of like our anchor point to which we'll mix all of the sounds around so the kick is pretty much always the loudest sound in your track now we can right click on this to unsolo it and now that we have the kick as an anchor point, we could mix all of these other sounds to sound good with the kick. Does that make sense? So let's lower this hi-hat, it's a little too loud. Okay, that's good for now. Let's go back to the channel rack F6. The hi-hat is a little bit too long. So what we can do is just open the sampler. As you can see, this is the hi-hat. If we increase this out, it's going to fade it out and we can make it as short as we want. about right there is good okay let's press f5 
So now we have an 8 bar drum loop and we can pretty much just go from here. So let's try adding a plugin and making a bass line. Open F6 and we want to make sure to create a new pattern which is up here. You can press the plus icon, name it bass or something like that. Press enter. Now click this plus icon on the channel rack and you can look for 3x oscillator. It's in the synth classic section or you can go to more plugins, look up 3x oscillator and then double click. Now this right here is a plugin, it generates sound. A plugin can either be an instrument like a synthesizer or a piano or something like that, or it can be an effect, so compression, reverb, etc. Now that we have this open, just follow along with me. It looks confusing, but it's really, really simple. As you can see, we're selected on the sine wave and we want to be selected on the saw wave. Up here, you can see that the saw wave has a lot more frequencies than the sine wave, and that is because the sine wave is just a perfect tone, it's just one frequency. As you can see, the saw wave has a ton more frequencies or harmonics. Now this is what we're going to do. We're going to turn up the detune just a little bit, maybe by about plus six cents. And then we're going to enable this second oscillator, an oscillator just generates sound. So we'll turn this up halfway. This is the volume right here. Let's select the saw wave. Now we have two saw waves playing at the same time. We can turn the detune of this one down by a negative six. Now let's turn the fine of oscillator one up by maybe seven cents. And then this one can be negative seven. Now we have a very basic saw bass and we can actually turn down the pitch of this to negative 12 and the same goes for this one. This is just lowering it by 12 notes, which is an octave. Okay, now here's the thing, here's the fun part. We can go to this gear right here, click it, and click this icon right here. This is going to open the envelope settings as well as a few other options. Now with this, we can enable the envelope. And as you can see, the volume of this sound is following the shape of the envelope here. So you can follow along with me. Decrease the attack, decrease the hold. I'm going to leave the decay right here. Turn the sustain down and turn the release down and maybe put the decay right about here. So now we have more of a pluck sound. Now we can go to mod X and this controls the filter which is over here. This is the cutoff of the filter. And then mod Y is the resonance. Let's enable the envelope and create a very similar shape to what we did before. And you wanna make sure to turn this filter down. And now it's really starting to sound like a bass. And actually at this point, the volume is not very necessary, so we could disable it if we want to, because the filter is kind of following the volume anyway, if that makes sense. So now that we have this, let's go to the pitch envelope, enable it, and we can create this very small spike. You can copy my settings here. All this is doing is adding a little bit of punch to the bass. So the pitch is going down really fast, which is causing that effect. Right about there is good. If we want to, we could even go back to this and do a few adjustments here. 3x oscillator is one of the most simple synthesizers. You can go ahead and experiment with it if you want to. Okay, so we got our bass, but we need to program in a bass line. So we can do that by making sure it's selected in the channel rack and then press F7 or just right click and select piano roll. Now, of course, here we can program in our bass line. So I'll just put the note F2, and by the way, I'm selected on the quarter beat option for the snap to grid, and make sure to select pattern mode, because otherwise it's going to play through the song and not the pattern. So we can just create a very simple bass line rhythm. And you can follow along with me. I'm literally just going to hold control, left click and drag, and control C, then control V to copy and paste it. And control B. Maybe this can go down an octave, so just hold control, left click, drag, then press control and down arrow. So that sounds good, but what if I just select every second note here? I kind of hear this in my head. Press control, up arrow to raise them up by an octave. And now we have this cool rhythm. It gives it more of a groove. Let's go back to F5 and we can select the bass pattern and just left click. Now let's select song and press play. It's 
So now we're getting somewhere. Let's go back to F6 and make sure to add this bass to its own mixer channel. So I'll just do four and I'm using my scroll wheel, by the way. Go to F9. And this is the bass line here. So I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. It's a little bit too loud. That's good. Now let's go to F5. And by the way, these green dots basically always mean that you can right click to solo or left click to just disable it. So I want to solo just the kick and the bass. So I'm going to right click on the kick channel and then left click on the bass. And you might be able to hear that the kick and the bass are just clashing a little bit. Now there is a way to fix this and it's called sidechain. Sidechain essentially just ducks the volume of whatever instrument it is. So in this case, the bass, when the kick is playing to create room for the kick, that way they don't clash together. Let's do that. I'm going to show you a very specific technique that I use. First of all, I'm just going to right click on this and select insert one. That way it inserts a new channel above the kick. We can right click on this, press rename color and icon, name it sidechain. I'll do a darker color, press enter, and this can be our sidechain track. Now let's just drag in any sample. I'll just drag in a random kick, this one right here. And you're going to want to make sure this kick is very short. So I'm just double clicking on the sample here, increasing the out all the way and then decreasing the length by about right there. So it's literally just a very short click and we can normalize this as well. Make sure it's hitting at zero decibels. Now I'm going to select the paint tool and just paint this all the way through like that. We want to make sure it's hitting on every kick. Let's right click and press auto name. This will just name it and color it. And as you can tell, you can hear the click and we don't want to be able to hear it. And I'll show you how we're gonna use this. So we're just going to use this click right here as a signal for the bass to duck down in terms of volume. So let's go to F6. Let's add this to its own mixer. I'll just do five. Go to F9. We can also right click and rename this sidechain and color it, enter. And I also want to move this channel all the way to the left. So how we can do that is just hold Alt and then press the right arrow. Now this is what we're gonna do, okay? We're going to unroute it from the master. As you can see down here, we have a cable going from the sidechain channel into the master. We want to left click on this arrow to unroute it from the master. Now if we play it, it's gonna be playing, but we're not gonna be able to hear it. And that's because it's not routed to the master. We want to go over to insert five, which is where our baseline is and right click on the arrow, sidechain to this track, we're going to go to the baseline, open slot one, and then we can search for fruity limiter. This one right here. Now follow along with me. Make sure that compressor mode is enabled. Right click on this and select the sidechain channel. Decrease the threshold, increase the ratio all the way and decrease the release a little bit. So you can already hear that the volume of the bass is ducking every single time that this trigger right here is playing. Let's right click on this and then once again, now you can hear that the bass is ducking every time that the kick hits because the sidechain trigger is playing on every kick. If we disable it, it sounds a little bit more messy, but if we enable it, it sounds a lot more clean. We can go back to F9 if we want and go back to the baseline channel and adjust the release for how long or short we want the side chain to be. So right about there is good. Now you're probably wondering how this works. Well, the ratio decides how much the volume gets lowered, as you can see here. If we turn it down, the volume gets barely lowered at all. So that's why I like to turn it all the way up because this creates a very strong sidechain effect. The threshold is almost like a trigger point. As you can see, you can set this to a certain amount of decibels and anytime the sidechain signal, that click sound that we created, peaks over this threshold here, that's when it tells the compressor to duck the volume. That's why I like to turn it all the way down. And like I said, the release is basically just a timer, how fast or slow the sidechain is. So let's go ahead and organize what we have so far because organization is very important for your workflow. This is the kick right here. We can right click this, rename it to kick and choose a color. 
I'll just do this red color. I like to make my drums red. You can do the same for every one of these. And then lastly, we have bass line. I'll just make this one kind of purple. We can do the same for the playlist as well. Go to F5, right click, rename color and icon, and do the same thing for each channel. And by the way, to make these their color and name automatically, just right click on the track and select auto name clips. So we want to start building out the rest of this track, right? What if we add some sort of melody or synth or something like that? Let's add another plugin. Open F6, the channel rack. Let's press the plus. And I'm going to choose 3X oscillator again because I'm trying to use only FL Studio stock plugins. And of course, it's very simple and easy to understand. So select it. We're going to choose saw again. And make sure to disable these. By the way, this up here is the typing keyboard to piano keyboard option. You can left click it and when it's activated, it'll turn orange. This literally just allows you to use your typing keyboard as a piano. You can right click it and select different options and scales as well. Anyway, I'm just going to use the normal saw wave. Let's open the gear icon again. Select this. This is going to open the envelopes, enable the envelope and let's create a pluck shape again. Turn the filter down again and let's create an envelope for mod X. Let's increase the resonance just a little bit to add some texture. Just a little bit, right about there. And then we can create an envelope for the pitch again. Let's enable the envelope. And then we could just create the same exact plug shape for like the sixth time. Or we could reverse it by turning this amount down. This is going to create that slide up effect. I think that sounds pretty cool. I'm going to go back to the plugin, turn this down by an octave. And we could even enable this oscillator right here and select the white noise. Turn it to about right there. And this just gives it a little bit of texture. Right about there. So now that we have this synth sound, let's press F7, open the piano roll and start making a melody or something like that. If you want very in-depth education for FL Studio, as well as learning music theory, learning how to make your own chords, melodies, and produce professional level music, there's so much content. I can't even remember it. But if that sounds something that you're interested in, go check the link in the description. So as you can see, we have these gray notes here and that's because we're selected on the bass pattern. And that's okay because I'm going to use the bass pattern as kind of a guideline for this next pattern that we're going to create. If you don't know music theory yet, just follow along with me or you can learn it in the FL Mastery Academy. I'm going to take this up an octave. Maybe something like this. And shorten it. Take it all up an octave, control up arrow. I'm just going to hold control, left click and drag, control C, control V. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Let's create another chord for this one. By the way, once again, I'm selected on the quarter beat. Same thing again. Once again for this one. By the way, you might notice we have a couple of options down here. This is the same exact thing as the graph editor. You can press control and open a ton of these other options. We have panning, velocity, etc. Then you can control it by left clicking with your mouse, but I'm not going to mess with these right now. So now that we have this pattern, let's press control A. This is going to select the entire thing, except for the ghost notes, of course. Press control C. I'm going to delete this by pressing delete. Now let's create a new pattern. I'm going to name this chords. Press enter, then press control V, and we can make sure this is lined up. I'll select pattern mode, enable the metronome right here. We can use the metronome to make sure everything's lined up and on beat. Perfect. Now I'm going to disable the metronome by clicking on it again. Let's go back to F5, and then we can paste in our chords. Make sure to select song mode, press play. And I'm just going to right click, rename chords. I'll just do this color, auto name clips. F6, put this on its own mixer channel. F9, we can turn this down. Now we pretty much have a full main idea. We can start to develop it more and mix it and do all this other stuff. So really quick, I'll just right click, rename this to chords, do the same routine. Now let's mix the bass a little bit. First of all, I'm just going to use my scroll wheel and kind of scroll this down to the bottom here. And I'm going to add a new effect. So let's click on slot one and I'm going to search up blood overdrive. This is basically a saturation plugin. 
it essentially adds more harmonics to a sound. All I'm going to do is just increase this. And of course it's going to make it a little bit louder so we can go back here and turn it down. It saturates it so it makes it sound a little bit more pleasant to the ear. Let's add an EQ in slot two. I'm going to select Fruity Parametric EQ two. Now with an EQ, you can take these bands and lower specific frequency ranges, as you can tell. So we can use this tool to shape and fit our sounds together, almost like in a puzzle. So the first thing I'm going to do is just cut the sub bass, so about 100 hertz, and we can adjust the intensity of the curve here. And then at the top, we can select the band type. So I'm going to choose high pass. We can use this knob to adjust the bandwidth. I'm just gonna right click reset. I'm also going to low pass this a little bit because I want it to create more room for the synths. I don't want this bass to have too much treble or high end. I'll take this band and lower the mids a little bit. I'll make sure to select the low pass band on band seven and adjust the intensity here. So I just want the bass to have this type of sound. Let's do the same thing for the chords. I'm going to apply another blood overdrive, but this time I'm not going to saturate it too much, just a little bit. By the way, this plugin right here is not the best because of course it's an FL Studio default plugin. A better alternative that I usually use is FabFilter Saturn. But since I'm trying to do this with only stock plugins, this is kind of what I have to use. And actually we can use this post gain right here to level it. Right about there. Supply an EQ. And we want to make sure to cut the lows or the bass because this is going to create room for the actual bass itself. We don't want the chords to be taking up the frequencies of the bass because this is going to create some clashing. We also don't want to go too far that it just destroys the fundamental frequencies of the sound, which is going to ruin its character. So right about there. So what I'm doing right here is just kind of cleaning up the sound a little bit. Just making very, very small adjustments and then we can even increase the high end just a little bit. Make sure to compare the before and after of the EQ. So you can do that by clicking on this. Let's press F5 and I'm going to do some arrangement here. So I'm just going to hold control, left click and drag, press control B. This will just duplicate the entire section over. And I kind of want to remove the clap here as well as the hi-hat in this first section. Sounds good. So now that you pretty much have the basics of FL Studio down, I'm gonna start building out the rest of this idea, doing some more advanced production and all of that. I'm not gonna explain everything that I'm doing now because my throat hurts. I'm gonna I'm gonna make another hi-hat pattern here. So hi-hat two, there we go. And make this red, F6. Maybe this one. Let's add this to its own mixer. Now I want to, I want this hi-hat to be more of a detail. So what I'm gonna do is apply some reverb to it. I'll choose Fruity Reverb 2. Increase the decay a little bit. And this wet is how intense the reverb is. Maybe some delay as well. So I'll choose Fruity Delay 3. I'm literally just going to right click on these arrows here and select Ping Pong. Kind of get that side to side delay effect. It goes from the left speaker to the right speaker. Now I'm going to use the slicer tool right here. You can press C to select it. And what we can do is either left click to slice the end of this sample off, or we can just right click and then it's going to slice it and delete it automatically. I'll use the paint tool and just drag this over. By the way, we can select the tracks here, right click on them and then select move up to just move them up. And now we have kind of a category for our drums. And what if we layer this clap? I have a very specific sample in mind. That one right there. I'll right click on this and select insert one. And we can just put this snare 
Sounds more like a clap, but whatever. I'm going to lower the volume because I know it's going to be very loud. Put this snare under every clap. Layering your samples is a very important technique that you need to learn when you're producing music because we can take this normal clap and add a layer to it to give it more texture. You can just barely hear it. it's more of a detail, but adds more texture to it and the little details matter and make sure both the claps are level with the kick. You can actually hold control and select both of these mixer channels and just lower them at the same time. Okay, so you might remember that we cut the sub bass out of this bass right here. And now we want to make a dedicated sub bass to fill up these frequencies here. So let's go to F6. Let's create a new instance of 3x oscillator. I'm going to disable these oscillators here and I'll select the triangle wave. I like the triangle wave better because it has a little bit more harmonics than the normal sine wave, which of course is just one frequency, like I said earlier. So select triangle wave. I'm literally just going to go to the bass pattern, control A, control C, go back to the sub bass, open the piano roll, create a new pattern, and then control V. And we can press control down arrow to lower this an octave. Go back to F5, put this in the playlist. And now it's more full, we just want to make sure it's mixed in. Now here's the thing, we want all of the instruments and not just this bass to be sidechained to the kick, right? So you know what we're gonna do? I'm going to delete the limiter on this bass. I'm going to unroute the sidechain from the sidechain trigger to the bass. I'm going to rename this to sidechain trigger and then make a new dedicated sidechain mixer channel, which we're going to apply the limiter on. Click on this right click sidechain to this track, go back to the limiter on the new sidechain channel, right click and select sidechain trigger, and then do the same settings as before. Now we can take these channels here, right click on the sidechain channel and route it to this track only. So do it for all of these, even the sub bass. And now all these instruments are sidechained. Now for the sub bass, I like to apply an EQ and just cut the low mids. I just don't really like these frequencies for my sub bass. It's just what I prefer and it kind of cleans up the mix just a little bit. So as you can tell, we still have the essence of all these upper harmonics here, but we have the main sub bass. Does that make sense? I'll name this sub bass. And you can do alt left or right arrow to move this around. Let's apply some reverb to these chords here. just fills up a little bit more space because this track is a little bit dry. Okay, I only have a little bit of time left on my camera, but we've pretty much produced a song now. So I'm just going to speed run this, show you some really cool tips that I love, and then we'll end it. So I'm gonna open these vocals. We can choose a random one like this. It's in the playlist now, double click on it, press Control E. This is going to open an audio editor called Edison, comes with FL Studio. What we can do is select the blur tool here, adjust the settings and press enter, and now we have this. So it creates this really ghost-like effect and we can left click this and drag it directly into the playlist. Now I'm gonna place it just like this. This will be our ambient vocal. Go to F9, put this on its own mixer. Then I'm going to route it to the side chain. Also, this is off key, so I'm gonna pitch it up. Okay, that sounds good. Now I have a really cool idea for this. Open F9 again. Let's apply a ton of reverb to it. You can just copy my settings here, something like that, as well as some delay. Let's apply a panomatic. This just adjusts the volume or panning automatically of the sound. So we can select pan, increase the amount, increase the speed. And in fact, I'm going to apply a little bit of fruity fast distortion to this vocal, just a little bit. Now here's what we can do. Let's open a fruity balance. I'm going to right click on this volume and create automation clip. Go to F5 and with this automation clip, we can automatically control the volume of the vocal over time. So if we zoom in here, I'm going to select quarter beat and create this kind of wave shape. Maybe a little faster. There we go. One more thing we can do is double click on the sample, go to this mode here and select Stretch Pro. We can change the format and this can give it different textures.
All right, let's do a few more things. I'm going to apply another reverb to these chords here. Now, this is a cool trick. Let's increase the size all the way, increase the low cut just a little bit, increase the decay, and let's right click and create an automation clip for this wet. Go to F5, and we can create some really cool reverb sweeps for these chords here, something like this. The reverb kind of sweeps up before it plays the chord. Another cool trick I like to do is apply a really fast delay to my melody. I'm going to select my own preset because I don't have enough time to recreate it. You can copy my settings here if you want. Now we can create an automation for this mix knob right here. Right click, create an automation clip, go to F5, go to the playlist, and we can automate this in a very unique way that kind of creates this spring effect. Now we have a pretty decent track. for a beginner FL Studio tutorial with only stock plugins, it's pretty good. By the way, if you want to learn FL Studio in under two weeks, get a ton of bonuses, get help from me, and join a community of producers just like you, check out the link in the description. As you can tell, everybody in here is making amazing music. They're already learning FL Studio, downloading the sample packs, and it's honestly amazing. Like, I genuinely think it's sick the best investment that you can make if you want to learn music production in FL Studio. So if you want to, please check the link in the description. Make music now and you'll thank yourself later. Peace.